Hello everyone. Uh, today we are going to see a topic known as alpha agonist. So in recent times, uh, this drug has been in use, uh, has been in a high uh, increasing trend in anesthesia. So now we will see some basic points about these two drugs in anesthesia. So the there are only two drugs in anesthesia which we commonly use, use which belongs to alpha 2 agonist group. So those drugs are dexmedetomidin and clonidin. So these are so to understand these drugs well, first we should know what is alpha 2 receptors. So alpha 2 receptors are adrenergic receptors which are autoreceptors. That means these receptors are present in the preganglionic uh, nerve fiber. So sympathetic preganglionic nerve fibers will contain these receptors. So whenever these receptors are stimulated, being that they are autoreceptors, what they will do is they will inhibit the release of sympathetic nervous, uh, nervous system, uh, sympathetic uh, neurotransmitters from the preganglionic to the postganglionic. So basically what they will do is they will inhibit the central sympathetic outflow or basic or their central sympathetic suppressant. That is their role. Now. Uh, so as I told you in this point, uh, it is mentioned reducing the central sympathetic flow. And now uh, there is a nucleus called as locus ceruleus, which is present in the pontine, uh, pontine area of the brain, the response of the brain. So this nucleus contains the maximum number of alpha-2 agonist receptors. So the function of this nucleus, the important nucleus mediating sympathetic nervous system, memory, analgesia, arousal and vigilance. So these are all the functions of this nervous, uh, nucleus. So if you inhibit this, these nucleus, all these uh, functions will be lost. So that is very useful in anesthesia. Uh, and uh, this is an MCQ point. These drugs are also called as centrally acting non opioid analgesics. Um, moving on to the next slide. So, the stimulation of these receptors, that is, inhibition of this nucleus, will produce analgesia, hypotension, bradycardia, and sedation. So, pre in the previous slide itself, we saw that uh, the function of this nucleus is uh, controlling sympathetic nervous system, arousal, vigilance, and uh, maintenance of analgesia. So, when you suppress sympathetic nervous system, what you will get, you will be, you will definitely get hypotension as well as bradycardia. So that is the function that is seen with these drugs. And uh, the, this nucleus is responsible for arousal and vigilance. So when you suppress this, the patient will be naturally become more uh, docile and the patient will sleep. Okay. Then analgesia is one of the functions. So this is how this uh, drug acts. So analgesic property may also be attributed. So uh, this is an, also an another MCQ question. The analgesic property not only depends mainly on the central uh, sympathetic outflow, it also depends upon the spinal cord receptors. So the same alpha-2 receptors will act on the spinal cord also. That is how it produces analgesia. Okay. So in the, in the first slide itself, we saw there are two drugs. One is dexmedetomidin, another one is clonidin. So we'll see some important points about dexmedetomidin. So before that, you should know something about dexmedetomidin. In current anesthesia practice, dexmedetomidin is like a rock star because almost everyone wants to use this drug um, because it's a very new drug and it has a so, much, so much potential for this drug. So I feel that you might get at least one question from this topic. Now, uh, so it is a dextroisomer of the meditomidin. So meditomidin is a, is a well-known drug which is used in veterinary practice. Now they have produced a dextroisomer which has less side effects than that of meditomidin and less potent than that of meditomidin. Now it is being tried in humans. And uh, uh, this is an MCQ question. Atipamazole is an antagonist of dexmedetomidin. So whenever there is a toxicity or accidental over, over, overdose of uh, dexmedetomidin, we can use atipamazole uh, for to antagonize the actions of dexmedetomidin. And uh, this is the most important point. Sedation produced uh, by, uh, by the dexmedetomidin is, uh, is by decreasing the level of arousal. In the first slide itself, we saw the pontine nucleus uh, is mainly responsible for arousal. So by suppressing the sympathetic nervous system, the basically the patient will become less aroused, less vigilant. So the sleep will be like very natural, like going to sleep. This is very, very useful in anesthesia practice. In opposition, like what are the other drugs we have for sedation is GABA, GABA, to, GABA A antagonist, like Medazolam, Diazepam, Propofol, all these are GABA A antagonists. These drugs, what they will do is they will cloud the consciousness. So patient will feel that something is wrong, but still they won't be able to control their sleep. That is the action of GABA A antagonist, but an uh, alpha 2 antagonist is natural sleep. So this is why these drugs are more commonly used in ICU settings. Okay. So now let's see the comparison between dexmedetomidin and clonidin. So in this slide, actually this is, uh, these two drugs are big topics, but I have included only the important, uh, important things in these two topics. So the, this is an MCQ question, receptor selectivity. So even though it is an alpha-2 agonist, it will have some amount of alpha-1 activity also. 
so the sensitivity for clonidine clonidine is an older drug it has been in anesthesia it has been in practice for a long time but dexmedetomidine it is a newer drug it is only in being in anesthesia practice for almost like 5 to 10 years so alpha 2 versus alpha 1 activity will be for clonidine is 220 is to 1 for dexmedetomidine it is much more specific that is alpha 2 specific 1620 to 1 and for half life actually i'm sorry the half life is given wrongly Dexmedetomidine is shorter acting, that is 2 to 3 hours of half life. Uh, clonidine is longer acting, that is 6 to 10 hours of half life. So this also dexmedetomidine is more preferable than that of other uh, than that of clonidine. And then when you use these drugs as pre-medication, because currently in anesthesia practice, these drugs are being used as pre-medication in many surgeries by many anesthetists. So what are the benefits it does? It attenuates the intubation response. Both, both clonidine and dexmedetomidine will attenuate the intubation response. So by while intubating, even though we give propofol, the thiopentone or uh, succinylcholine muscle relaxants, the patient will still have a lot of pain. So there will be increase in heart rate, there will be increase in BP. So but when you give a pre-medication like clonidine or dexmedetomidine, it intubates, it attenuates the intubation response. For example, if the BP increases to 140 by 90, when you give clonidine or dexmedetomidine as a pre-medication, the BP increase may not be so much. It could be in a normal ranges. So it is very useful in a hypertensive or myocardial infarction patient. Those patients won't tolerate higher BP. So reduce the anesthetic requirement. So like opioids, this reduces the anesthetic requirement. Like volatile anesthetic requirement will be much more reduced. And uh, we know that this produces hypotension and bradycardia. Both will produce hypotension and bradycardia. And both will reduce the post-operative nausea vomiting. PYNB is nothing but short form for post-operative nausea vomiting. So finally, respiratory depression. So this is the very important thing which most of the anesthetists likes. Because dexmedetomidine and clonidine both will not cause respiratory dep depression. Clonidine higher doses may cause minimal respiratory depression. But dexmedetomidine, it is very very safe. It does not cause uh, respiratory depression. So for this purpose only, we are using dexmedetomidine in total intravenous anesthesia. So that is called as tiva, total intravenous anesthesia. In some surgeries, we cannot give muscle relaxants. Uh, so in, during these surgeries, we can use dexmedetomidine. So surgeries like uh, when you stimulate the facial nerve, so surgeries involving parotid gland, the surgeon would want to know whether he is going near the facial nerve. So what he will do is we'll, he will put a neuromonitor. So when you give, a, when you uh, use, the, when you do that kind of surgeries, you cannot give muscle relaxant. If you give muscle relaxant, even if he is touching the facial now, there won't be any contraction. So for that, uh, we have to stop giving muscle relaxant. Do in such surgeries, we can use dexmedetomidine because it produces analgesia, it produces sedation, it produces uh, anesthesia. So it is a complete drug. That is why it can be used as a total intravenous anesthesia. The clonidine also can be used, but dexmedetomidine is much more preferable. Um, no post-operative delirium of ketamine. See, normally ketamine produces a minimal amount of post-operative delirium in many patients, not everyone, uh, in almost uh, a certain group of patients. So both can be used as an antagonist for that. It both clonidine as well as dexmedetomidine prevent that effect. Shivering, like shivering, uh, shivering. We have a lot of drugs. We can use uh, um, um, we can use uh, ketamine. We can use uh, tramadol. We can use uh, another opiate. Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot the name. When in the shivering topic, I'll tell that. So it reduces both clonidine as well as dexmedetomidine reduces shivering in post-operative sedation and ICU. So this is also very commonly used nowadays. Uh, for clonidine, not so common, but dexmedetomidine, it is very commonly used mostly in pediatric population. Patients who are in ventilator who are very agitated, we can use a dexmedetomidine infusion to prevent their agitation and we can use a sedation. Analgesia can be given for those patients. And uh, finally, additives. This is also important. So in spinal anesthesia, epidural anesthesia, or peripheral nerve blocks, what we used to do is we give local anesthetic into the intrathecal space, epidural space in the near the peripheral nerve in all the, in the regional blocks. So when you mix with dexmedetomidine or when you mix clonidine with uh, in a very small concentration, like uh, one microgram per kg of dexmedetomidine in epidural, five to ten micrograms uh, in uh, intrathecal then one microgram per kg in peripheral nerve blocks. If you use such low concentration along with local anesthetics, uh, you would have studied. Uh, additives we will discuss in a separate topic, but uh, this alone you remember. So if we, if we use additives uh, for local anesthetic in these procedures, the duration of the local anesthesia prolongs. So the it, it produces a dense uh, motor blockade, dense sensory blockade, and the long duration of uh, sensory blockade so that the patient's first request of analgesia and the post-operative period like when you do a total knee replacement a 
and you put a spinal with uh, uh, so when you put a spinal anesthesia which has an additive of clonidin normally the sensory blockade will last only around 4 hours but when you mix clonidin it may even uh, extend uh, up to 6 to 8 hours so the patient's first analgesic requirement will be lower so the analgesic side effects will, be, will also be lower so we give tramadol or we give paracetamol so the dose can be reduced and the side effects due to tramadol such as vomiting can be reduced so this is very important i think this can be asked as an mcq question because normally the additives they ask is adrenaline so when you mix adrenaline the adrenaline with local anesthetic uh, the systemic toxicity reduces and uh, the duration of action also increases but if they want to ask something new, then they can go for uh, additives like clonidin or dexmedetomidin. So you remember it prolongs the action and it uh, reduces the uh, analgesic requirement. So finally, we will see a few points about clonidin. So clonidin is a drug which has been in anesthesia practice for a long time. So basically, it is used as an anti-hypertensive. It can be used both in essential hypertension, that is primary hypertension, as well as secondary hypertension. And uh, it is one of the most commonly recommended drugs in uh, hypertensive crisis. So nowadays, we use labitalol or uh, um, nicor nicorandal for hypertensive crisis in commonly, but still we can use uh, clonidin as hypertensive crisis and prevention of chronic pain. This is very, very, very important. So chronic pain itself is a separate uh, entity. Uh, the, so chronic pain patients could be due to trauma, could be due to cancer, could be due to any regional pain syndromes. So all those patients, clonidin will have, clonidin as well as dexmedetomidin can be used for chronic pain and cancer pain. So cancer pain also, uh, these drugs can be commonly used. And finally, to reduce the sympathetic overdrive during opiate withdrawal. See, for any drug, any patient addicted to any drug, be it alcohol, be it smoking, be it tobacco, any drug when the patient goes into the withdrawal phase and the patient decided okay i have to stop this drug and then the patient decided that uh, they don't want to take this drug they will go in for a withdrawal period so during that withdrawal period their sympathetic nervous system will go in for overdrive so in that phase they will sweat they will have severe tachycardia severe vomiting bp hypertension everything will be there so clonidin is such a wonderful drug that it reduces the central sympathetic drug so it will make the patients comfortable during that phase so once the patient crosses that phase they can uh, successfully uh, successfully make their journey towards um, recovery so clonidin one of the important uses of uh, clonidin is hypersympathetic overdrive during opiate withdrawal can be prevented and one of the drug which is which can be used during this opiate withdrawal is midazolam so midazolam it makes the patient sleep in alcohol, we use chlorodiazepoxate. In uh, other opiate withdrawal, we can use either diazepam or midazolam. Then for intravenous regional anesthesia, similarly, like an additive, if you mix local anesthetic with clonidin and give it intravenous, uh, give, uh, give it in a BS block, it will prolong the action. It will make the patient more comfortable. But this is an important MCQ question because when you abruptly stop clonidin, we are using clonidin for hypertension. And when you abruptly stop clonidin, suddenly the patient will go in for rebound hypertension. So you should not stop abruptly. You should phase it out. You should slowly reduce and phase it out. So these are the important points about clonidin. I have discussed very few and important points only about these two drugs. You remember these things. That will be enough.